Well, not much has changed since yesterday. You guys may have noticed that everything is out of the shop as far as tractors go. I've only got the two and then the Squire, my work worker bee. Um, that's because I'm getting ready to clean this entire wall to make preparations to get the mill in here. The lathe itself is going to get its own legs. This cabinet is going to go away and I've just I've, I've, I've got my work cut out for me I've got a lot to sort through but I had a question about I believe it was about the Gilson say hi little Billy I had a question about the Montgomery Ward's Gilson so we're gonna go out and take a look at that do a quick little walk around of it and this is another area of contention with me it's got to get cleaned up out here and I'm trailer poor I've got four trailers on the property now all right the Gilson let's take a look at the hydro it is a high low the stickers upside down for you guys let's turn it around it's a high low and here's your lever for free freewheel neutral and uh, high and then low Let's get that down we have a hydro ram in here for the lift obviously there is something missing here also we've got a hole here I don't know if something's missing or not uh, the 16 horse uh, is complete and does turn over I've not tried to start it yet that may very well happen soon if it is a good strong running engine of course the price of the tractor uh, will go up accordingly um, of course throttle choke light switch uh, I've heard tell uh, just from being at the tractor show that uh, the headlights are worth a lot well these are original Westinghouse headlights and I assume that is what makes them um, desirable let's see what else uh, yeah the two front tires are toast two back tires are fine Steering is really, really stiff, but I'm sure some little bit of lubricating will take care of that. Uh, like I said, I don't know a whole lot about it, but it appears to be complete, and the sheet metal appears to be pretty straight. We'll take a look at the back. Got a little bit of a rip and tear here, and a dent there. Somebody made their own makeshift little hitch on there. Just an ugly piece of steel. And I see mounting points on the axle, which appear to me to be for a three-point, probably a category zero. Uh, that about rounds it out, I guess. What you see is what you'll get. And yes, it's a Bendix start engine. Uh, you can also mount a starter generator to it if you wanted to. And like I say, right as of this moment, it is untested. So if there's an interest in it, uh, you guys can let me know. Now let's see what else we can get into. All right, gang, you can see I'm in a sweatshirt. Uh, just told you what I was going to do with this one wall. I'm going to be getting started on that today. Not really looking forward to it, but it's got to be done because that mill needs to get uh, relocated pretty soon. Uh, but we are going to attack the sample Briggs or excuse me sample Clinton see if we can get it running if so then we will find a happy home for it so that it's not in the way and then we've still got the 10 horse that we have to grab out and throw a new coil in and get spark to it and make sure that it runs all right so other than those two things um, let's just get started we'll see you guys in a minute Let's get this Clinton special up on the engine test stand. This is like watching paint dry because this thing moves so slow. It's almost painful. Rise, my child. Rise. Rise. Better lifting it by hand. Okay. Um, 
forward. It just so happened that that hook fit perfectly on the engine lift on that. Now we can get this out of the way. First thing we got to pay attention to is right there, that carburetor, because it is stuck. Choke is the only thing that's working. That's a monster carburetor too, isn't it? Air breather is actually on the bottom side of it. So we'll pop that off and take a look at it. Hang on. I'll get you a little closer. Got to go old school with getting the carburetor off because everything's in the way. I was able to get that one out with my impact, but this one's going to take a good old-fashioned box-in wrench and open-end. And after we break this loose, we've got main throttle line here. And it's set up real similar to a Briggs as far as having a little fulcrum point mounted to the block and your throttle rod right here. Well, you can't see. Yeah, you can see. Right there. So, and I don't think it's attached down below. Nope, it's loose. So we'll just keep on backing this sucker out until it falls on the ground. I'd rather that didn't happen. We also have to remedy spark. If you guys remember, we did check this for spark. And I'm not going to spend a great deal of time on this engine uh, because I do need to get that 10 horse in running condition and get it all checked out and make sure that it's going to be good to go. Okay, just pop that line off right there. Ugh, and that's it. That's the only thing that's holding it. And so when you you see can you see that down here? When you pull it, it pulls on the governor and gives you more or less throttle. It's pretty nice. Gasket came off nice and clean. Happy with that. My fuel line hole is completely full of something but we'll get the air cleaner off of this thing it's a funky looking air cleaner isn't it but we'll get it off get it apart and take a look inside that is a massive monster carburetor it uh, looks like it's a HEW-4 and it is a Walbro carburetor how about that and it's got a 160 stamped here. It's a massive carburetor. All right. And we do know that the engine spins freely. So we've got that to our advantage. And we can work on getting spark via the points cover right here. Hopefully that is just a matter of dirty points. And we won't have to do anything major there. And we will come up to the top of the engine and also do a compression check. I'll break out my big half-inch heavy-duty DeWalt plug-in drill to drive the crankshaft over so we can check compression. But first, let's take a look inside this carburetor. Hang on. <laughs> 